Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, Pastor Esther here with another devotional. Um, we have been talking about our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ Jesus, who God says we are in him. Um, as we go into God's word this morning to discover another identity, I just want to encourage you to join me first in grabbing your Bibles. Um, and then we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, for loving us. We thank you, God, for inscribing your identity upon our hearts and our minds, first through your spirit that dwells within us and through the gift of your word. So thank you, God. Lord, I ask that this morning as we hear your word, make our hearts supple. Let our hearts be good ground for the seeds of your word to grow and and take deep roots. Give us ears to hear what it is that you are speaking, Holy Spirit, and have you willing your way. We thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you would join with me today and open to the book of Luke chapter 4. So today's identity that we are going to learn about is we are free. We are free. In Christ Jesus, we are free. So what does that mean? What does freedom mean? Um, I know for us who live um, in the Western world and more specifically here in the United States of America, you know, when we think of free or freedom, we think the right to do anything and everything. Well, let's see what God's word has to say about freedom. So if you join with me again to the book of Luke chapter 4, reading verse 18. And this is what it says. This is Jesus speaking. He's actually in the temple. He has picking up um, a scroll. Um, he scroll meaning um, a scroll containing the readings of the Old Testament, specifically from Isaiah 61. And he's reading and this is what he says. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Okay, so here is Jesus. Jesus is reading the scripture. And um, if you continue reading on the passage, after that, Jesus closes the scroll. And in verse 21, he says to them, today, as you listen, this scripture has been fulfilled. So Jesus is saying, hey, I am here to fulfill this scripture that says I have been anointed to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom to the captives, recovery to the sight, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now on the surface, those are amazing and wonderful things. Um, yeah, who doesn't want to hear the good news? Who doesn't want to be freed that has been that has been in captive? Who doesn't want to see who has been blind? Who doesn't want to be free that has been oppressed? And so when you think about this freedom, it in our natural understanding, we might think of oppressed as anyone who for example, any groups of people who have been oppressed, whether physically, mentally, socially, economically. Uh, when we think about blind, we think about individuals who can't see, um, captives that can range from whatever is our individual experience. And while those are all things that are true in Christ Jesus, um, there's something of greater wealth and importance to God. Um, in terms of captivity and what Jesus has come to free us from. And we can learn more about that again through the word of God. So jo join me by going to the book of John chapter 8. Okay, And I am going to be reading from verse 30. So we want to ask the question. Jesus has already said he's come to free the captives. He's come to free the oppressed. Okay, what are we in captivity to? What are we oppressed from? Okay, so to understand truths, 
within scripture we have to go to scripture itself to reveal the truth about itself okay so this is john chapter 8 from verse 30 and it says as he he being jesus was saying these things many believed in him so jesus said to the jews who had believed him if you continue in my word you really are my disciples you will know the truth and the truth will set you free now, as he was saying this, it goes on to say in verse 33, we are descendants of Abraham, they answered him. These are the, the Jews, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? And Jesus responded, this is verse 34, I assure you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son does remain forever. Therefore, if the son sets you free, you really will be free. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Now, I know we've heard, for those of us who have been in church, we've heard that scripture used many, many times. Um, who the son sets free is free indeed. We've heard um, church people quote that scripture. We've heard politicians quote that scripture. We've heard leaders, world leaders quote that scripture it's a very popular quote but what is this freedom this freedom that jesus is talking about is the freedom from sin in fact jesus tells us that any one everyone actually he says who commits sin is a slave to sin so what jesus is trying to tell us here is that we when we sin and sin is basically anything that is done whether in thought or deed um, that is against God's word, against God's law, against God's command is sin. And Jesus says, when you are sin, you are bound by that sin. You become a slave to sin and a slave has no say. A slave has no freedom to do as they will or desire to do. A slave must do what its master tells it to do. And so the master of our lives was sin until jesus and jesus frees us on the on the cross by dying and being the penalty for our sin what jesus does is one he fulfills the law he fulfills everything that the law asks us to do and when we accept jesus's sacrifice we accept um his sorry the bible says that when we accept jesus sacrifice we embody jesus this is in galatians it talks about we put on christ and because christ has fulfilled all in the law then it's imputed to us as though we have fulfilled all in the law which i might just say is pretty cool you know think of it as a transference right so Christ fulfilled all of the law. We fulfilled all of the law and we are no longer bound to the hold of sin. Also, we know this because I've been saying this a lot that the penalty of sin, which was death when Jesus died on the cross, he broke that penalty. But Jesus goes on to say that the word of God, God's word, if we know it, then it will set us free. We will know truth and this truth will set us free. This truth will set us free from the hold of sin, from the pains of shame, because I know for so many of us, myself included, there's a shame that comes with sin. And the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 1, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So we are not condemned by God because Jesus paid the price. And in that price, we became free from the shame of sin. We became free from the hold of sin. The Bible goes on to say that we will not fulfill the desires, the lust of the flesh if we walk after the spirit. Who's the spirit? The Holy Spirit. And he dwells within us. Now, we could never receive the Holy Spirit outside of Jesus's sacrifice on the cross. But now he lives within us and our obedience to him um, gives us power to not sin. That's what the word of God says. Isn't that amazing? Not only that, through Jesus, we become free from the torment of fear. The Bible says in first, second Timothy, excuse me, um, one seven, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind through the Holy Spirit. We are no longer bound to the crux of fear. In fact, in first John four, 
18, it says that perfect love casts out fear, knowing the love that we have of from the Father because of Jesus in the cross. It frees us from the pains and the torments of fear. We are free from generational curses, sins, shames, and failures because everything that was old has become new in Christ Jesus. We are free. The old man is gone and it sins and its ways. In fact, the Bible says again in Colossians that every ordinance that was written against us, ordinances of our past, ordinances in our families, whatever it was, that Jesus nailed them to the cross. And even those ordinances, as Jesus, as, as we understand more, the ordinances, of sins, the sins of our fathers, the sins of our mothers, the sins of our families. They've all been nailed to the cross and they have no weight against us and our life and our generations. We are free because of Jesus and the cross. We are free from the weight of our past mistakes because we know that God is faithful and just to forgive us of all our righteousness if we confess them unto him. And we have that freedom, that availability of God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. We are freed from being alone because God dwells within us. And he said in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And we can hold on to that promise because of Jesus. We are free from loneliness because God dwells within us. And this is one of the biggest ones. We are free to come before God. We are free to have a relationship with God, with the maker of the universe and live in accordance with his word and his purposes for our lives. Because of the cross, we are free to relate with Jesus because Jesus broke the, he tore the veil. He became the mediator between us and God. So through his blood, I can come boldly before God. Isn't that amazing? We are free to live for Jesus. Now, I know that, again, when we think about freedom, we think about the freedom to do whatever it is that we want to do. But that's not the freedom that God has for us. In fact, that's not true freedom because the Bible talks about our hearts being sinful and desperately wicked. And even the freedom that we desire for ourselves at its best is against what God desires and God's purposes. But through Jesus, we are free to walk in relationship with God. We are free to be not bound to sin, but bound to God's grace and his goodness and his love and his mercy so that we can do what is pleasing, what is good and what is acceptable in his sight. So I wanna encourage you guys to understand that you have been made free. The power of sin over your life has been broken through the cross of Jesus Christ. So whatever it is that you find yourself still struggling through, I want you to know that you are free from it. And how we appropriate that freedom is through the word of God. Maybe you are still bound by the shames of your actions and your sins and your rebellion, but you are free because Jesus' blood washes us clean. We are presented clean and blameless before God, the word of God says. So you don't have to hold on to that shame because God no longer condemns you. We are free to have relationship with God because we have him, his spirit dwelling within us. And through the Holy Spirit, we can hear from God. We can be led by God. We can experience God in a new and unprecedented way. In fact, the Bible says, like I said before, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. So I want to encourage you guys. I'm excited. I'm excited talking about this, knowing that I am free to relate with the maker of the universe because of the cross, because of Jesus. So when God looks at us, looks at us excuse me, he sees us as free people. And indeed, what Jesus said, what was true in Isaiah 61 is true today, that Jesus has freed us from the captivity of sin. He has opened up our eyes to see God and all that he is. And he has freed us from the oppression of sin, from the oppression of fear, from the oppression of shame and every other oppression through his mighty power. We are free. God bless you. Be encouraged. Have a blessed and wonderful day.